What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive. Now this Pro S is one away from the top of the lineup, so it's gonna have a ton of bells and whistles. The only thing higher than this is the Pro S Plus, and you can just get a few extra things on that. But this Pro S is absolutely loaded up, about $56,000 worth of SUV here, and we're gonna take a look at all of it in this video and then take it for a test drive. But let's start here up front. This is the pure gray color, which I absolutely love. It's gotta be either my first favorite or my second favorite ID4 color here. There's a really nice blue blue color as well. It's almost like a sky blue that I really like, but I don't really see that one that often. I've seen one since I've worked here, so I think it's pretty rare, but this pure gray I see all the time and it looks fantastic. It's kind of a mostly matte paint color. It's got a little bit of gloss to it, but I think it looks really nice. Now, the overall design of the ID4 hasn't changed a whole lot for 2024. I actually took a look at a lower trimmed model a few months ago, but this one is going to have a lot more features than that one. That one, I think, even just had cloth seats. So this one's got the leather seats. It's got the panoramic roof. It's pretty much fully loaded, so I wanted to take a look at it here. But you do have a few noticeable changes for 2024, and I'll mention those as we go. But up front here, you do have a full LED headlight kit. LED daytime running lights, and then your main beams and your high beams are down here. Those are also LED. You've got an LED light bar that runs across the front. You've got an illuminated Volkswagen badge that's LED. You've got LED tail lights in the back. The whole thing is fully loaded with LEDs. These even have poor weather lighting, and they have the adaptive cornering lights on them. So it's really the top of the line kit that you can get here with Volkswagen. Then you have a nice body colored split here, and then a little bit of air intake at the bottom with some ultrasonic sensors and some little accent pieces down here as well. But other than that, it's a very simplified front grille, and I absolutely love that. I think it's a really, really clean design. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to have a frunk here, so when you open up the hood, you're gonna get access to some electronic components. You can see the front motor down there. You've got your windshield wiper fluid, all that kind of stuff. Easy to access, but unfortunately, no frunk. That's something that I really hope that Volkswagen changes in the future because I would love to have a little bit of extra storage here in the front. Although you still get really nice storage in the back, so at least you're not missing out on that. Up top, you'll have rain sensing windshield wipers with heated wiper nozzles, but this ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive here sits on beautiful 20-inch two-tone alloy wheels. You get a little bit of cladding up around the wheel wells, but a really nicely designed clean EV style wheel here. Some all-wheel drive Pro S badging on the side. Now you used to have a power folding mirror option on on the ID4, but they actually took that away. Unfortunately, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. But you now just have manual folding side mirrors here, but they do have integrated turn signals. They've got blind spot monitoring built in. They are heated, but just manual folding. You got some roof rails up top and then a beautiful large piece of panoramic fixed glass up top and there is a shade on the inside. Keyless access here on the door panels with this little button here. You can uh, put your fingers up underneath and squeeze. The door will open up and then just put your finger on here to lock it up. And there is a little LED light inside, which is always a nice touch. So you can see those door handles easier at night. A little bit of cladding down at the bottom. Now, as far as performance goes, this ID4 Pro S is gonna have the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's going to power dual motors, one in the front, one in the back for a combined 350. 35 horsepower, and you're going to get about 263 miles of range on a full charge. Now, that's an EPA estimated range. You're never actually going to get that. You can get close depending on your driving habits, but most likely you're going to get a little bit under that, probably around like the 240 range. All right, so here on the back right of the car, we have our charge port. So you can push there to open that up. This has an 11 kilowatt onboard AC charging port with DC fast charging up to 175 kilowatts. So you can pull this out, pop it into a DC fast charging charger if you want to. And you do get a little LED light back here for better visibility as well, but not a whole lot going on back here. Just close her up like so. All right, so moving here to the back of the ID4, you'll get a little body colored spoiler to help keep stuff off this pretty compact back windshield, but you do have a wiper here just in case. Illuminated Volkswagen badge in the center here that will connect to your brake light bar that runs across the back here. So like I mentioned, you do have LED taillights back here and they all kind of work their way all the way across in this really nice, strong light bar configuration. I'm a huge fan of the stance, especially at night with this illuminated Volkswagen badge here. Nice clean ID4 badge right under underneath that and then nothing else and I love it. They keep it nice and clean back here. No excess badges, no excess geometry. It's pretty clean. The only thing that's a little weird to me is this excess cladding here on the back, but 
you do have a trailering hitch back here and you can tow up to 2,700 pounds. So it is kind of nice that this is a little more rugged just in case anything does bump when you are trailering with this thing. And then you've got some ultrasonic sensors dotted around, some reflectors down here, little body colored accents and things, but overall very clean here in the back. Rear camera up underneath with a sprayer and you do have a power lift gate here. And with that open, you can get access to 30 cubic feet of cargo space with the second row seats up, 64 cubic feet with the second row seats folded down. Also in here, you can see that we've got our monster mats here and they have a nice little hanger on them so you can put them in your closet if you want to. And then you've got your cargo blocks in here that you can configure how you want. Now inside of this box, we have a bag. And then inside of this bag, we have another bag. And then inside of this bag, we have our dual charging cable here. Volkswagen calls it their two-in-one mobile charger. Chevy calls it their dual level charging cable. Everyone's got a different name for it. But essentially, you've got these different ends that you can put on this charger, depending on whether you want to use a 240 volt or 120 volt outlet. 120 volts going to get you full charge in what, like 50 hours, 60 hours maybe. And then the 240 volt will probably do it in like 10 hours. If you can do 240, definitely do that. But it's nice that this cable does come with it because not all EVs come with a mobile charging cable. <clears throat> I'm really, really, really sorry. I didn't realize that it was, I'm sorry. Why are you laughing? And it does just connect to your J1772 plug currently, no NACS yet. It is nice that they give you a little Volkswagen badge on the side, so you know. You do have some underfloor storage here, so you can keep your two-in-one charging cable down there. There's also what looks like a tire inflation kit down there, but you do not have a spare tire. You've got some hooks, got a 12-volt outlet, some LED lights, little cargo cover here. You've got a 60-40 split, but you do have a middle pass-through in case you want to carry larger objects but still have people in the second row. But let's go ahead and hop inside. All right, so hopping here inside the cabin of the 2024 ID4, a couple of the changes that I was mentioning outside. First and foremost, the stocks here on the back are a little bit different. In previous versions of the ID4, this stock here was up on the actual screen itself. So you would kind of shift up here but now they've moved it down to its own stock on the side of the steering wheel here. Additionally, the infotainment screen has been changed a little bit. It's no longer a 12 inch system, it's a 12.9 inch system, and they've updated it a little bit kind of graphically and performance wise to make it a little bit less laggy than it was before, which is much needed because the system prior to this system was really, really bad, but it looked really good. And so it made me really sad that it was so laggy and hard to use. And while this system isn't like night and day better, it's noticeable enough and the design isn't horrible. It's not my favorite, but it's not horrible. They've changed some things for the better, changed some things that have made it worse. We'll look at all that in just a second, but let's just go ahead and talk about the cabin and the materials inside of the cabin here. First and foremost, over here on the door panels, you're going to get kind of a soft touch material up top with some satin silver on the door handle here. It is an electronic door handle, although it feels like a normal door handle. You may as well have a button. It's that type of door handle. You've got a little bit of black plastic here and then a kind of galaxy interior gray with some accent stitching and then a ton of gloss black plastic on the door handle here which is just makes no sense to me and then plastic down from that that same theme kind of runs throughout the whole cabin so soft touch with accent stitching up top kind of that satin silver and then kind of a textured black plastic and then gloss black plastic all around this center console piece and you've got some soft touch all the way down and then have some leatherette on the armrest here with accent stitching and just so much gloss black plastic man i'm telling you it is everywhere it's on the steering wheel it's on the screens it's on the high contact points it's everywhere it's Volkswagen's favorite thing. But over here on the left side, you have your lighting panel. So this is gonna have your poor weather lights, all of your defoggers. You can change your light mode from like auto to on to off, all that kind of stuff. There is a vent here. And then, like I said, that same material that runs across the top of the dash. Steering wheel here is a leatherette wrapped steering wheel. It is heated. You've got all of your adaptive cruise control buttons with travel assist on the left side, and then all of your media controls and your heated steering wheel on the right side. A lot of gloss black plastic, like I said, but other than that, is a nicely designed heated steering wheel. You've got a light and wiper kind of combo stock 
which is kind of what all the manufacturers are doing now on the left side and then similarly to other manufacturers are doing the shift stock on the right side so if you've driven another ev from another manufacturer you've probably driven a similar configuration to this now past the steering wheel you do have like a little five inch driver information display here it's got like what gear you're in range remaining safety systems adaptive cruise systems all that on that little screen not a ton of customization but it's not the worst design i wish they'd either not have one at all and just move everything to this screen like a tesla or give you a much larger screen i think the little like five inch dinky screen kind of feels outdated you do actually have a push to start button on the side of the steering wheel here so you can use that but you don't need to when you get in the car and you sit down it's going to auto detect that you're there and then if you put your foot on the brake it's going to go ahead and turn the car on and you can shift into gear now over here like i mentioned you have an updated 12.9 inch screen and this is going to have all the standard volkswagen stuff so radio bluetooth built-in navigation vehicle controls you've got app connect so you've got apple carplay and android auto wirelessly kind of an auto park system you've got a full charging menu you can change your drive modes you can change your interior ambient lighting you can change your seat position sync them up if you want want to you got your sound control on-screen climate you've got your personal voice assistant on here as well different users that you can configure and then all of your kind of climate control so heated and ventilated seats changing temps syncing them all that kind of stuff can be done through this system additionally if we go in reverse you can see our backup camera here and we can switch to more of a top-down kind of hitch view and then we can use park assist as well which we'll do a demo of at the end of the video you do not have your overhead view cam system here on the id4 i think they got rid of that for 2024 if i'm not mistaken but i actually made a secret features video on the id4 if you want to check that out i'll have it linked down below and we cover all of the in-depth little intricacies of this display and some of the other features the id4 has you have two vents underneath and you've got two cup holders here a chi enabled wireless charging pad two usb-c ports tons of gloss black plastic under the center console here you have a nice deep pocket looks like we have a little led light in here doesn't feel like we have any additional storage ports though but nice pocket for storage and then you do have a regular glove box as well touch capacitive dome lights up top here you can slide here to open your sunshade on this fixed panoramic roof black liner up top just a standard auto dimming rear view mirror nothing crazy to it now these seating surfaces are super premium these are a vtex leatherette seating surface in galaxy so it's like a two-tone so black perforations on the center and then on the sides you get kind of this gray bolstering with little id word mark on them they're 12-way power adjustable with four-way lumbar support, position memory, and massaging function, heated and ventilated for driver and passenger. So super, super nice seating surfaces here on the Pro S. And as far as the safety systems, this has all of Volkswagen's IQ Drive features. So you get travel assist, lane assist, emergency assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, front assist, which has emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist monitoring, active side assist or blind spot monitoring, and rear traffic alert. And it's going to come with a couple additional features like a rear view camera system, park assist, Assist Plus with memory parking, park distance control for front and rear, predictive adaptive cruise control, dynamic road sign displays, and light assist, which is high beam control. You do have the Volkswagen ID light, and it goes across the front there. It'll do things like indicate when you're using navigation of which way you need to turn. It'll let you see charging status. It'll let you know when you're using your voice assistant, things like that. It's a pretty cool system in the way that they use it. And the other thing that you have throughout this entire cabin are touch capacitive sliders. You have them here for changing temperature on the infotainment, turning the volume volume up and down. You even have them on the steering wheel for switching between your views and increasing your speed and increasing the volume and then even touch capacitive for turning things like travel assist on. If you like touch capacitive, you're going to love this cabin. All right, hopping here into the second row seats here. I have this seat on the kind of easy open mode, so it's pretty far back right now. And I still have probably two inches of rear leg room here. You can tuck your feet up underneath. You've got mat pockets down low and then a little phone pocket up top as well. Door panel materials stay pretty consistent, although this goes from a soft touch to a hard touch. And then you still have that same kind of galaxy gray leather and then plastic all the way down. Vents in the second row, but a lot of gloss black plastic back here. Little tray, two USB C ports as well. Like I said, you can fold this center console down. You get two extra cup holders and a nice armrest. And then you can get access to this pass through in case you want to carry larger objects, rugs, two by fours, you name it. The legroom's not amazing, but it's also not terrible if you were to scoot this seat up a little bit, but you do get some nice headroom. And then of course that panoramic roof is gonna reach its way back here. So you're gonna get some nice clean visibility out the top, hooks, lights, all kinds of goodies back here, but nothing too crazy, but very comfortable. 
All right, let's take the ID4 for a little test drive. Now, you guys may or may not know this, but the ID4 was one of the EVs that I was considering when I finally traded in my 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. There were really two main reasons why I didn't end up getting the ID4. One was that the infotainment system drove me so crazy that I just didn't want to use it. I didn't think it was very good. And the other one was performance. Even on the all-wheel drive dual motor variant, I just didn't find it that fun to drive. And really, Volkswagen's fixed both of those issues. So if I were to be in the market again for an electric SUV, I would definitely consider the ID4 more seriously. It's a really great SUV. The only real things that I think it's lacking are, overall, the infotainment system is still not that great. The DC fast charging speeds is pretty low, all things considered, right? In the market, it's low. And the price is still pretty high at about $56,000 for this almost fully loaded Pro S Plus. So there's several factors that kind of still hold it back for me, but we'll talk a little bit more in depth about some of those in a second. But let's get from stop here, just putting the pedal to the floor in uh, sport mode. All right, here we go. Yeah, no, that's quick for sure. It's weird. I almost don't know how to describe it. It almost like pins you back immediately. Like it makes you feel like it's just going to launch and then it like pins you back and then just kind of crawls. It's weird. It's like got so much torque, but it just doesn't zip. Like the speed isn't going up that quickly, if that makes sense. That was like zero to 48 or so. And I don't know how long that was. Like, don't get me wrong. It still feels super, super quick, but for being a dual motor all wheel drive, it still feels like it's lacking a little bit of juice, just a little bit, but still really fun. Let's do it again. There we go. That had some pickup. Let's get a DB test here at city speeds. like around 61 when I was actually moving when I kind of slowed down with these cars it got a little quieter let's talk about three things I like and three things I don't like as much about the updated 2024 ID4 first and foremost I have to say I love the design of the ID4 that has always been one of its biggest selling points to me I think it's really attractive I like the stylings I like how it's simple in some places and then it gets a little complicated in other places it's got a really really nice design language overall second I really like having these 12-way seats with heated and ventilation and massaging. That is hard to beat at this price point. And thirdly, I absolutely love travel assist. We'll check it out here when we get up onto the highway. You can use it not on the highway. It's not really designed for that, but you can do it. And basically, it's like a semi-autonomous driving system that's pretty stinking good. Now, it's not hands-free. You are going to have to keep your hands on the wheel or at least indicate to the wheel that you're still there. So it's not true hands-free, but it is a really great system. And I think Volkswagen knocked it out of the park with that. And there's no reason why they can't make it hands-free in the future. Just put a little sensor right here and you're good. Now, what are three things that I don't like as much? One, I think for this price point, $56,000, the interior materials on the door panels in certain places are not the best. And I know if you guys have watched my videos for a long time, you know that I'm a really big kind of nitpicker of cabin materials. And it just drives me insane that you can get vehicles at a much cheaper price point than this that have nicer materials. Volkswagen, there's no reason for you to skimp out on the materials on something that's this expensive. On the lower trims, sure, completely get it. Totally normal. It's what happens. But to have almost the same material quality at this higher price point with really no other noticeable differences other than like a little bit bigger battery, which I get that that's expensive. Not that much more expensive, not $20,000 more expensive. You would think that they would definitely have some nicer materials here. The second thing I don't care for as much is this little screen here. I mentioned it earlier. I just wish they do one of two things, either get rid of it all together and just put everything on this screen, even speed and all that kind of stuff like Tesla would have, or make it massive. This little dinky screen is just not my favorite. And then the last thing that I have to just point out outside of like the slightly slow acceleration, not slow, like EV slow, slightly slow EV acceleration. It's just the gloss black plastic everywhere. There has to be a better solution. I would take this glossy silver plastic everywhere over the gloss black any day of the week. Volkswagen, please get rid of it, please. But now that we're waiting here, we can get a idle DB test.
about 47 dB at idle, and that is with the AC on very low. You can kind of hear it in the background, but pretty quiet as you'd expect. So I mentioned a couple changes for 2024. Obviously that new 12.9 inch screen with a slightly redesigned UI and things like that, that is new for 2024 here. The repositioning of the shift stock here is new for 2024. And then that bump in power over 2023 to 2024 with that larger battery pack and improved motor performance, that is also new for 2024. Outside of that, pretty much everything is the same outside of them taking away some things like the power folding mirrors, the 360 degree overhead view cam system, things like that being gone. Unfortunately, everything else kind of remains the same for 2024. Let's give it some more juice here. It's got some nice some nice juice it'll go and again i'm talking in terms of evs i've driven pretty much every tesla under the sun speak of which there's a cyber truck right up here i've driven that i've made a review on the cyber truck if you guys are interested go check it out there's a cyber truck right there is it a cyber beast though uh it doesn't look like it speaking of another one there's a model y right there so yeah tesla's all over the place i've driven them pretty much all of them outside of the s i've made reviews on the equinox ev the blazer ev the silverado ev the silverado ev work truck the id4 the Ionic 6, the Kia EV6. I've made reviews on all of these. You can find them on this channel or my other channels. If you want the Cybertruck review, I'll have it linked down below over on my tech channel, Metz Tech. I've driven a ton of EVs, that's my point here. When I talk about EV acceleration and acceleration here on the ID4, I'm just comparing it to other EVs. If you're comparing this to like a Tiguan or a Taos or an Atlas, this is gonna be way more fun, way more fun. Not even in the same ballpark. Let's rip it here off the highway. put on travel assist here, set, and we should be good. And you can see it's gonna like turn the wheel a little bit to keep me in the center of the lane. It's gonna keep me away from the car in front of me and keep me at my preset speed, which is currently 75. So it's letting me know, hey, put your hands on the wheel. You can kind of wiggle it a little bit and we can get a highway DB test here while travel assist is going. Pretty quiet at about 67, 69 dB. That's impressive. So it is keeping me in the center of the lane, but like I said, it's not hands-free, so it's gonna make you kind of wiggle the wheel every once in a while. Blind spot monitoring. So yeah, really nice system with travel assist. Makes just regular kind of cruising and traveling. Not just a clever name, a little bit less taxing on the driver. So should you pick up a 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive? Well, I would definitely say get the all-wheel drive no matter what you get. Make sure you get dual motors, make sure you get the larger battery pack that has the improved range. I think it's just more fun to drive. Unless you just absolutely need the range, you wanna get the rear-wheel drive variant to get some better mileage, then sure, go with that. But I think the all-wheel drive is a lot more fun to drive. Now, should you spend $56,000 before the tax credit on the Pro S or Pro S Plus, that's really gonna be up to you. I really think there's some nice creature comforts here. I love the huge panoramic roof. I love the 12-way heated and ventilated seats. They're very comfortable. I've got the massage going this whole time. That's great. I love the improved cabin materials and the LED headlight kit throughout. Really all that's hard to beat. And you can get some of that on lower trims, but not all of it. So I really think you have a nice mixture of technology and comfort and convenience in here. I think really the only thing that would make it better is just some improved improved materials in the cabin. But outside of that, it's really fun to drive, especially if you're coming from a gas vehicle and you have a ton of technology in this thing. Is it worth $56,000 pre-tax credit? Maybe. Maybe. Is it worth under 50,000 after the tax credit? That's more like it. I think it probably is at that point. If you can get it with that tax credit and get some of the awesome leasing options or financing options that Volkswagen's offering on this thing, I think it is well worth checking it out. And definitely take it for a test drive because that's really gonna help you understand how fun it is to drive, especially if you're coming from a gas vehicle. All right, let's try out this parking assist real quick. Searching for spots. There's lots of spots. All right, 
it sees that one. So we'll go ahead and start. So this only works if there's vehicles around you, just as a heads up. It doesn't work in just an open lot. Oh God, oh God. I got nervous. I almost stopped it. Nice. Yeah, that did well. I'll give you a shot outside so you can see. A little bit far. You know, some extra space over here, but overall pretty good. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive. Let's talk about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.